Hi, Peter Charles here, folks of Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie the polar shrimp, the original version from the 1930s. Uh, it's a very simple fly, and you may have seen polar shrimp that are more involved in this, but there are other variants that have done which use a lot more materials and are more elaborate. So you can look at those if you're interested in the really fancy stuff, but this is a simple pattern and we're just going to go with that today. So our materials that we're going to be using, we're going to use a size 2 salmon single. I think, you know, it might depend on the size of the, the shrimp that you'll see in your estuaries. You might want to use a smaller hook. I'll leave that up to you. Our thread is an 8 alt black vivus. Our tail is red saddle. Our body is orange chenille, preferably fluorescent. The hackle is fluorescent orange saddle. And again, yeah, fluorescent is best. And the wing is white calf tail. So let's get going. As is usual, since it's a chenille body, we do not have to get fancy with laying on the thread. Bring it back to the hook point, or just a bit before the hook point. Now get yourself a good clump of red here. Line that back, make sure it's on top. Nice quick pattern this one in the in the original version. Tie in our chenille. Bring it forward. Now put a wrap at the back. Nice and tight when you're on that bump. Try not to move your tail. Then back off as you come forward. Back off the tension. And give it one turn up on the return of the hook. This is really lovely chenille. I wish I could know what brand it was. I got it years ago and it's lovely stuff to use. I have some chenille out there that is really awful. So it's nice to use this very fluffy stuff. It's very supple. Okay, now for our hackle. Now, I'm going to use both sides. In the pattern I've seen, it's a very um, bulky, uh, long uh, hackle. So I'm just going to cut myself a tying end point. The hackle goes past the, 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 gape of the, the point of the hook, well into the gape of the hook. Okay, you want to make sure everything is going forward. And when you're dealing with hackle that has two sides, you haven't stripped off one side, just come in and pinch the, ha uh, the barbs to see if you can get them to fold over. Doesn't always work. Some work, some fold nice and easily, and some don't fold at all. Pinch it hard onto the quill. There we go, that made a... Still getting some that are going forward, but that's okay. We'll stroke them back. So as you can see, it really pays to take a moment to fold that uh, uh, hackle barbs backwards. And uh, that way it really... I don't know if this is going to break. There we go. Got it. Now I'm just going to wind that back a little bit just to force those hackle barbs back. There we go. Now for our white calf tail. Let's size that. Uh, usually it's about the length of the body. It's a short tail. About the length of the hackle. So there we go. Right about there. Trim it off. Soft wrap, just pull it back till you get it where you want it. And if a few pop out, that's okay. Now whip finish. And finally some head cement. Okay, there we have the original 1930s uh, version of the polar shrimp. 
I think it's a great looking pattern. That nice hot orange should really show up, especially on an overcast day with that green stained water. I think this thing would look fantastic. So, uh, you know, I, you know, if any of you that like uh, fishing, um, you know, in the spring, uh, when you're, you're seeing a lot of uh, spawning going on, or especially during the Chinook spawn for the Great Lakes, I mean, you get steelhead and brown trout coming up after uh, the row that's being spilled out of the nests. Uh, look at this thing. I mean, yeah, they hit anything that's orange with a spot of white or something, that, that will probably pick up a lot of fish. So give it some thought. Cheers.